this year at Bowman Library with a whole new little gray book spotlight. So for this week, we are taking some inspiration from titles, but not just any title. We are taking a look at books that have numbers somewhere in their title. And believe it or not, there is way more than maybe what you think of or that we even like pop into our, our brains. It was so much fun to discover these books. And because we are taking some inspiration just from titles, we have kind of like a very wide spread of books this week, a little something for everyone. We got everything from some nonfiction, we got some mystery, we got some sports fiction, we got some realistic, we have some standalones, we got first in a series. So a little something for everyone. So we're gonna get started with these six books that all have a number in their title. So let's get started. Our first one is Walk to Moons. So Salamanca, otherwise known as Sal, is 13 years old when her mother leaves her and her father to go on a spiritual quest. She promises that she's going to return, but she does not. Now Sal's grandparents decide they are going to travel from Ohio to Idaho, and that's where Sal's mother went, because they want to go find her, bring her back, and they decide they want to bring Sal along for this journey with them. Now, during this six-day car ride, she entertains her grandparents with the story of her new friend, Phoebe, whose mother has also gone missing. <coughs> Sorry about that. As they get closer to their destination, though, Sal starts to realize how similar her story is to Phoebe's, and then her grandparents start to share more with Sal about her mother, and she ends up learning things about her that she never knew. And Sal starts to deal with her own emotions that she has with her mother in the situation she finds herself in. Now, if you like a good realistic story, I will tell you this one can be a little complicated at times, but it's worth it. This one will also surprise you at the end. I highly recommend this one. It's a realistic, has a little bit of mystery. There is a ton of emotion. There's some family stuff. Yeah, it's your classic realistic story. This is Walk Two Moons. 11 birthdays. Okay, so this is the first in a series. It has about four or five books. So if you want kind of like a mid-series, but not an incredibly lengthy one, you might want to start with this one. So Amanda and Leo have been best friends for their entire life, all 10 years. Sharing the same birthdays, um, they have always had their parties together. But one day, Amanda catches Leo talking behind her back. And she decides that for her 11th birthday, she wants to have her own party. She's done with Leo. But it goes horribly wrong. And just to make it worse, the next morning when she wakes up, what does she find out? She finds out that for, for some reason, however, she is reliving her 11th birthday, which was that horrible day over and over and over again. Now, Amanda must figure out, she has to solve this mystery, figure out what she needs to do to get out of this, this, this situation that she finds herself in. Yeah, part, part mystery, part, you know, realistic, part, you know, I guess if, it's, if you kept reliving a horrible day, part horror maybe. So this is all about figuring what to do after you and your best friend get into a fight. It does end up being a pretty fun read, and again, it is the first in a series, 11 birthdays. The 100-Year-Old Secret. This is part of a series called The Sherlock Files, to give you a little bit of a hint if you know anything about Sherlock Holmes. Now, Zena and Xander Holmes find themselves leaving America to go live in London for a whole year, and it is there one day that they are off playing their favorite game, that their lives change. Now, while sitting outside of a hotel, guessing what people do for a job based on, you know, how they're dressed and, you know, what they're, you know, what they're wearing, what they're carrying, you know, how they're handling themselves. This stranger looks at them, approaches them, gives them a note that is written in disappearing ink. This message tells them that they have to go next door to the Dancing Men pub to get their next and it's there that they find out that they are actually related to the Sherlock Holmes and they are given his unsolved cases notebook. Zena and Xander decide they are going to do what Sherlock Holmes could not and they are going to solve the cases that are in this notebook and they want to prove that they are better than Sherlock Holmes. Now this classic whodunit detective story is the first in a series. It will keep you wanting to get ready. You'll be solving, you'll be figuring out clues right along with Xena and Xander. 
and you may even you might want to you might even solve it before they do i don't know but maybe you'll end up being like right when they are this is the hundred year old secret the 13th sign so this fantasy book explores what would happen if the 13th sign was added to the zodiac which has 12 currently but if a 13th sign was added would it be something good or would it end up being something bad now 13 year old Jalen, she thinks she's already gone through enough tragedy for her entire life but when her grandmother goes into the hospital with cancer she decides that she has to take matters into her own hands to figure out what's going on and she decides she's going to consult a fortune teller. Now, when she goes to this reading, she's completely underwhelmed by what she finds out. And Jalen decides that the book that the fortune teller was using called The Keepers of the Zodiac, she goes out and finds that book for herself. Now, the fortune teller tells her, if you go find this book, do not open it. But what does Jaden naturally decide to do when she opens it? And that is when everything is going to change. And there's going to be a 24 hour countdown because Jalen has 24 hours to the battle, every sign in the Zodiac in order to prevent the 13th one from changing everything and everyone as, as we know it. But the Zodiac signs don't want her to succeed. I mean, like they want to be defeated. So they will do whatever it takes to stop her. Now this action-packed fantasy is one that will keep you on your toes, guessing the whole time. It is a standalone, so when you get to the end, there is a conclusion. You will know what happened. The 13th sign. Million dollar throw. Okay. If you like a good sports story, especially football, here we go. Nate loves being the store quarterback. He has a great family, an amazing best friend named Abby. Things will start to go wrong though for everyone when Nate's family is in danger of losing their house because of the horrible economy and the fact that his dad unfortunately lost his job. And then there's Abby's eyesight. Abby's eyesight starts to fail because she has this rare disease and eventually she might go blind. And that's the last thing Nate wants to have happen to his best friend. Nate thinks he has the solution though. He ends up winning this opportunity to go to a Patriots football game. And it is there at this game that at halftime, he is going to have the opportunity to throw a touchdown pass. And if he is able to complete said touchdown pass, he will win $1 million. And he knows that will I mean, I immensely help his family. They would be able to keep their house. He might even be able to help Abby, you know, like maybe get some better like treatments for her eyes, see if they can't like stop or at least like stop or at least slow down the progression of this disease. But as he starts to get ready for this big moment, the quarterback skills that he's always had, that he's always relied on, that's made him this star player, they seem to have disappeared. And he starts freaking out and wondering if he is going to be actually able to save his family and his best friend. Now this book will keep you guessing, it will keep you on the edge of your seat because you will be turning the pages as fast as you can because you will want to know what's going to happen when he gets to go to this game and it's his time to finally go on the field at halftime to throw this touchdown pass with so much on the line. Million dollar throw. And our last one for today is 12 days in May. So in May 1961, okay, this is nonfiction, we're back in 1961, there's a group of 13 individuals. There's men and women, there's black and white, and they board two buses in Washington, DC. And this, their goal is to take these buses down through the South to get to New Orleans so they could help with the civil rights movement, with, trying, with, every, with everything that's going on in the Deep South. They had decided that they were going to do whatever they wanted to because technically segregation was illegal in, on the federal level. Okay, so technically you weren't allowed to segregate people, but that was still going on in southern states. And there, other states had laws on the book saying that this was okay. Now, the further south these buses went, the worse the conditions got and the more violent the opposition they faced, culminating with at one point, one of their buses being bombed and a mob of people swarming it and they end up injuring pretty much all of the writers. Now this book takes a look at this journey. I mean, like, can you imagine like 
having so much passion for something that you're willing to go against like what what people are going to like they're, they're not going to agree with you you're putting yourselves in danger and for what you believe in and that's what these freedom writers do now they provide a look at their journey step by step um the positives that came with it are highlighted and even all the negatives that they face are also included I highly recommend this one it is filled with a ton of primary sources. There's photos right from that moment. The captions are incredible. I mean, here's a look at, at a picture of the bus after it was bombing at bombed. I mean, like it was a horrific event, but it brought up, it brought light and awareness to the situation that was going on in Southern States. This is 12 days in May. So these are the six of the books that we have here at the library. They have numbers in their titles. So I encourage you to come out, check out one of these, or maybe you'll end up browsing the shelves. And as you're looking, maybe you'll start to notice a little bit more that there are quite a few books out there that have some numbers in their titles. Maybe they even help it out. You maybe remember them a little bit easier if you're more of an analytical thinker. So I encourage you to come out to the library. We will help you find whatever it is that you're looking for. I hope you have an amazing week, and I hope you tune back next week for a whole new middle grade book spotlight.